Três agendas, eu vou ver aqui. Well, you two members of the media, thank you very much for coming out this morning to our media conference. I'm joined this morning by Deputy Political Leader of the MSJ, Ms. Riley McCall Banks, who is to my right, and one of our hardworking members of the Activist Council and part of our Victoria region, Ms. Naishima Coombs. Um, this morning, we are going to have the media conference and our statement led off by our Deputy Political Leader, Ms. Radical Goldbacks, who is going to address the, the issue that is in the hearts and minds of, of everyone in Trinidad and Tobago um, today and has been for some time, and that is the tragic murder of um, young Miss Andrea Barrett. And of course, we extend condolences to her father and all members of her family and her friends um, at, at this very difficult time. And this murder has come just weeks, months, or maybe more than a month after the murder of another young man, um, Ashanti. And so the country has been having to come to grips um, and address this horrific incidents of violence against against women. And so um, this radical government, so the political leader is going to lead herself, and I may add one or two more points after she has completed. Thank you, my political leader, David Abdullah. Good morning to the media and to our live stream. It is a sad day in this country again. And again, we are faced with a dark cloud hanging over us. The stream of tears, the loss of another babe, a daughter, a young woman who had a future. Our deepest condolences to her. And I know all of Trinidad and Tobago mourns with our family. Those of us who grew up in the 40s and to the 60s knew that there were only most times one or two bad men in the entire country. Now every community is riddled with bad boys, bad men, and no gangs, which means things went uncontrollable. Nothing was done over the years to address this issue of creeping crime, especially the culture of violence against women and children. How did we get here to this extreme level of violence and hate? We see it every day on Facebook, and we read about it in the, in the media and the death of our young women and children is testimony to it that nothing has been done. But what has changed our values? Money, status, competition. All this led to greed and selfishness. So we're really not looking out for each other and we want to keep on getting more and more. We have noticed that Religious organizations, their roles have minimized in many ways. Most of them now focus only on their members. And many people who still are very God-fearing, they're still racist, they're still dishonest, they still cheat, they still lie. So what has happened to our value systems? And of course, the most, important, the most important one, we are saddled by governments who were and who are unable to place, unable to govern, resulting in total breakdown of our society, broken systems, a broken country. Now traditionally, culture defined our role as women. And culture means um, religion, um, norms, and expectation. They define our rules as women. But over the years, it took generation of strong women and men to bring about these changes that we, we now enjoy a certain amount of equality and respect. But there's still something lacking 
And that lack is the will of a government to put things in place. They are not walking the talk. All of our governments are concerned about who have ever been concerned about is winning the next election. It is not about developing a society and molding the people that we would like to see, investing our young people as to what we want them to become, what kind of patriot we want to have in this country, what kind of work ethic we want in this country. So we are still far away from that. And I want to address our current leadership, our prime minister in particular, because I have been pretty peeved about some of the statements he made over the years. He too grew up in the 40s to the 60s, where the culture of violence against women was more verbal. And he has not corrected that. I recall the Prime Minister described the behavior of the leader of opposition as one as geometry behavior. He coined his own word, but we know what that means. And there's only women who refer to as a geometry, and we know the behavior, the expected behavior of that. So our Prime Minister would go publicly and call a female by her behavior a Janet. On another occasion, the Prime Minister said that a golf course is like a woman. They have to be groomed daily or else they will turn into pasture. And we know what that means. He came afterwards and tried to correct it. But we know what he was implying because he still suffers from that gender bias, that culture of verbal assault on women. And I will not let the opposition leader off the hook. Some women are socialized into believing that the men are always correct and the women are always wrong. We, we provoke, we encourage. But in this case, I'm looking at men are not wrong. I recall, I mean, the media may recall that in general elections last year, I was a candidate at the Flags of our constituency. And I was attacked by a UNC media supporter. And when the press approached the leader of the opposition, she was very cool about it. Let her take it to the police. She did not see a gender issue there. She did not even call on her members to exercise respect and restraint during election. So she does not escape, and that is the reason why we, we are spiraling downwards. We have leaders who are only vying for political power because they want power in itself without realizing what they can do with that power. Another time, our prime minister got involved in the shaming and blaming of victims. When he said, choose a man wisely. Yeah. I don't know if you all recall that. And that really pissed me off. Because we see people into relationships, marriages, 15, 20 years, and then they get divorced. Because something about that person eventually changed. But why are you blaming the woman? Why are you saying choose your men wisely? Why couldn't he call out the men and say, respect our women? If things are going bad, walk away. You don't have to kill. No, he did not say that. He blamed us. We are making the mistakes all the time. They don't. That's our ego. And we need to correct that kind of approach to dealing with issues on, on gender violence. Just after winning the general elections in 2020, our Prime Minister told our citizens that we have to start the healing of the government. I don't know if you all recall that. But I want to tell our Prime Minister in case he forgot, that government has responsibilities. It cannot escape. 
Some are written into our constitution and others by international treaties, such as education, good health care, housing, protection of your citizens, the most vulnerable. So how could he tell us we start, have to start weaning off the government? And it is not the first time he implied that. And he's getting away with it because he was put back into power last year. A government or a party is elected to govern. And the MSJ wants to send a strong challenge to the government. You better get your act together or you will be weaned off the citizens. The longest rope has an end. We know that same. Our citizens are getting there. And for example, Tobago has to be a wake up call. So you have to take action and we are making the demands and I'm going to put forward some recommendations. Some recommendations that could bring this country out of the level of violence against women and children that we are experiencing. And Mr. Prime Minister, don't worry. Our recommendations are easier to implement than probably buying a boat or selling a refinery. When I list them, you would see John Public making these recommendations all the time. Let us reimagine the transportation system. A lot could be done. The young and the poor depend on public transport. We have to make it reliable. We have to make it safe. We have to make it efficient. Many persons work on late shift or go to work early. And they have risk standing out there waiting for transport. We have to do something. It's a government responsibility to keep the economy going. PM, our PM, our Prime Minister must fix this. When a car is licensed with an H, there's an implied trust with that H. We flag it down and we get in without asking questions, without asking to see an ID because we trust that that age will take us safe to where we have to go. But what we see happening is with everybody who could issue a license plate is the problem. And for years, governments have been talking about regularizing the issuing of license plates. We are calling and demanding that they address that immediately. And they can even go further now that they can put microchip in all license plates so that these cameras can pick it up and track you to where you are. Then our people will be safe in traveling. At least a lot safer than it is now. But no, there's so much racket, and everybody knows about it, that they do not want to fix the system. It works well for them. But it's working against us, against you, against your children. We have to demand more. The issue of PH taxis has always been bantering back and forth, back and forth. It is time that PH drivers go and do the right thing, get your license. We are asking the government to give them three months to get their act together, or else there must be serious char charges and fines for someone applying a PH. Why, why, what was it, why, why is it so hard to go and get your, your, your H license? Why? Because it's easy to break the law and get away with it in this country. Who cares? When it doesn't affect the rich, it doesn't matter. But it is we, the ordinary working class people, that are affected by these issues. This must be changed. We are calling on the government that within the next three months, we want to see something happening in the transport division. As a former teacher, I can tell you, you can see behavioral traits, pattern of your students from early till they graduate. And sometimes this, this behavioral trait, we are not surprised by the path of life they have chosen. And teachers feel helpless when they see behavior in school that they cannot deal with. They are not equipped to deal with it. And we do not have enough guidance officers. We do not have enough social workers. 
Their ministries operate in silos. They do not network, they do not coordinate. And it has been caused from many sectors for there to be networking with various um, ministries so that you can treat the problem in a holistic way. If there are children with issues in school, it has to go back to the home. And it must be dealt with in that way. If what kind of society we want, that is where we deal with it. In the school system, how we design our school system. We want an education system that offers more equality. Now I just want to refer to a little bit in the prison system. The prison system will show that the majority of persons incarcerated for violent crimes have the lowest level of education attainment and usually come from very poor homes. And why they are followed from the system and their, their whole upbringing is on the wrong side. And it is getting worse. That is why we move from one or two bad men in a country to gangs and communities. We need to address that. The Ministry of Social Development need to work in, in harmony with the job place, with religious organizations, with NGOs, to reach out to our men our men for are hurting. If we have to do more to protect our women and our children, we have to fix the problems our men are facing. And we know that men have this ego that you can't cry, that you have to be macho. So then you have to, and when you're with a group of men on the side of the road, you have to say the nastiest thing to women passing. Then you're a real man. These things must be addressed. Men must be able to speak out. Men must be able to say, I need help. Men must be able to feel pain and cry about it rather than act it out. So we need to help our men folk in order to fix the problem with violence against women and children. Religious organizations and NGOs, they did a lot, a lot during this pandemic, reaching out to communities with all their hampers and all of that. But we, we want to call on them to see if we can do more. Work with the Ministry of Social Development, who I hope will develop programs to reach out to communities to be able to deal with this. I want to call on the Commission of Police to go back to the days when boots were in communities, walking the road, meeting the communities, meeting the villagers of the community, reaching out to families, doing a certain amount of mentoring. That is important. What will happen there? You build trust. And you wouldn't only have trust, but you could do mentoring, and you could actually assist in family problems, especially where there are difficult boys. We have to be able to call on various heads to do something about this. I want to call on the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition to do the right thing. Fix the systems, fix our broken systems. You must come together, that is the government and the opposition must come together and agree on the necessary course of actions, laws, resources to get the job done. They are lacking that political will to do the right thing and we have to force them to do it, we have to give them deadlines and hold them accountable. Or as no more excuses. Or as resign. If you cannot do the job, stop making excuses and give up your position. I call on people in, in this country, NGOs, individuals, to endorse what we have said. To call on the government to make these things happen. They're simple actions. And we want to keep our women and our children safe and we want to fix our men because we love our brothers, we love our uncles, our fathers. They are ours too. And we must be able to reach out and help them in whatever way we can. So again, I'm calling on the government to fix it or resign. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Radical for a very uh, important and comprehensive statement. Um, let, me, let me just add one of two additional points. Uh, one is with respect to the education system. 
Yeah, but she has policy on education for quite some time. Is that the school hours actually uh, become extended? Um, of course, that is in a not in the pandemic uh, situation where children are online learning, but children are physically in school. And the school hours are extended, not for the same teachers to work longer hours, to be clear, but in the afternoons, um, from 2.30 to 4.30, as the case may be, that all children are in school engaged in not extracurricular, but co-curricular activities of sport and artistic expressions of various kinds, whether it is music or drama or dance, whatever those artistic expressions are, and, and or sport. And in those programs, um, particularly where young boys and young male adults are involved, that we have males coming into, the, into those programs um, in sport and in art and drama and so on to mentor, to mentor and to train and to teach um, the, the young boys and, and young adult males. Very important because there's clearly um, a breakdown in the, in the family and community um, of a lack of, of positive role models and therefore we have to tackle that institutionally and that could be done of course through the schools and in activity where the young boys and young girls, male adults would be naturally involved and enthusiastic about. That way they could be taught discipline, respect for others, and so many other values which Ranta spoke about. Secondly, in terms of the education system, quite clearly there is a need for um, what can be generally termed to be sex education in school, um, but of course dealing with a whole range of gender issues, including the issue of, of how young boys have to treat with girls and later on in life women um, with respect that things like verbal abuse, physical abuse and the general objectification of women is a no-no. That, that value has to, has to be inculcated from very, very early. Um, and, and so the education system has to address that because we cannot rely solely on, on the family and the community to do that. Um, secondly, with respect to the objectification of women, where women are seen to be an object and therefore property, and therefore a man can do whatever he may wish, that has to also be tackled through our artists, and so we are calling on, on our um, artistic organizations Calypso, Chutney, all of the artistic organizations and so on, to engage all of our artists um, so that they do not continue to perpetuate um, the, the objectification of women and a value set of violence that is okay to be violent, it's cool or good to, to, to verbally abuse women. We have, to, we have to stop it at all levels, at all levels. And similarly, we are calling on the media and advertising and PR firms to change their approach to advertising, where again, um, women are seen to be objects that will sell a, a, a motor car or beverage or some sort of thing. All, all of that, all of those images and, and the messages that they communicate have to begin to be changed. Um, and so the media, advertising, public relations firms also have to be involved in this, in this national effort because it has to be a national effort. And sporting bodies and organizations, coaches, in your interaction as mentors with, with young boys and, and young adult males, they, you too have a key role, a key role to play in, in uh, ensuring that the value set is the correct value set. Um, lastly, I just want to add the issue of crime and the criminal justice system. Now, we have focused a lot on generally when issues like this come up. There's a hue and cry about greater punishment for the offender. 
And while that may be necessary, and I think in every case that uh, what is being called for is the appropriate thing, but, but that is the normal reaction. But it is not only a matter of catching and punishing those who commit the crimes, but we need, we need a major transformation of the entire criminal justice system. It, it is an abomination for someone to be charged with a crime in 2008 or 2009, and in 2019, 2020, those cases or that case has not been completed and the person either found innocent or guilty, and, and if guilty, then um, doing the punishment as, as sentenced by the court. So the entire criminal justice system needs to be fixed. It is broken. It is a dysfunctional system. Um, and we cannot take any excuses. We must hear from the Attorney General, Commissioner of Police, Minister of National Security, Commissioner of Prisons, the Director of Public Prosecutions, the Chief Justice, the Law Association, and in particular the Criminal Bar Association. We need to have a clear set of timelines as to when this broken system is going to be fixed, um, what has to be done, when it will be done, and by whom to ensure that the criminal justice system is, is working properly. So I just wanted to, to add that. Um, we have made a number of suggestions on different occasions about the criminal justice system. Now, now is not the time for us to focus on that, but we're simply saying that the criminal justice system is broken and it must be fixed. Um, we, need to, we need to have a proactive approach to these issues. As the old saying goes, prevention is better than cure. And I, I speak not simply as political leader of the industry, I speak as a father myself of two daughters um, who I suppose are the ages of the, the um, women who are here as journalists in their 20s. And so um, I too am you know, very concerned and we always now have to think about how children are getting, when I say children, they don't consider themselves children, right? Um, how our daughters, how you women get from point A to point B. It, it, it was not an issue 30 years ago or 40 years ago, in the same way it is an issue now. And it, it, it must put a great amount of stress every time you get up in the morning and figure, how am I going to go about my work and my life? And that can't be right. Or children, how they're going to go out and get into school and get back home safe. That cannot be right. And this country is too small and has too many resources to uh, have this situation continuing unabated. Culture of violence has to be addressed, and in particular, the culture and practice of violence against women and children. I just wanted to add those points to the uh, very detailed statement made by my colleague, uh, Ms. Radical Baba, so we are open to, to questions. Yes.